Oh, hello. Caught me off guard there. I didn't know that it was story time, but apparently it is story time with Uncle Scotty. And as luck would have it, I get to be Uncle Scotty today, your host for story time with Uncle Scotty. Hello, we have our own mugs. Mm. Hydration is important. This water is delicious. Also delicious with water. Washing our hands nonstop. Thank you to everyone who's been checking us out on Patreon, checking us out, supporting us, helping Storytime come to life. And today, we have another featured supporter. And this one is, drum roll please. Beatrix from Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, a city that I hold deep in my heart forever. My home, my home away from home, my home at home. Love Atlanta. Uh, Beatrix, thank you so much for watching. It means a lot. Hope you're enjoying this story, and I'm glad that you've come along for all of these different journeys. Everyone else, you can also check us out on Patreon. Please also, if you'd like to, uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel and maybe like this video if you do enjoy it as we proceed along. Also, thank you as always to our sponsor, Time, because without time, what is story time? Scott, feels incomplete. There's no time for stories without time. Now, we have been reading Mr. Popper's Penguins. And oh, Mr. Popper, he's really gotten himself in a situation. A penguin was shipped to him from Sir Francis Drake at the South Pole to his home. The penguin is now living in the refrigerator. Mr. Popper was like, take all the food out. We'll go buy another refrigerator tomorrow. In the meantime, I'll destroy this refrigerator by puncturing holes in it and install a handle on the inside so the penguin can come and go as he pleases. Now, while very supportive of the penguin, and because Mr. Popper is a dreamer, this is great that he is so invested in making this thing happen. I can't help but think that poor Miss Popper has to navigate this whole thing, try to be reasonable and understanding. In the meantime, the penguin is eating all the pets and moving around the house as it pleases. Let's see what happens next. Chapter five. Troubles with the penguin. The next day was quite eventful at 432 Proudfoot Avenue. First, there was the service man, and then the policeman, and then the trouble about the license. Captain Cook was in the children's room, watching Janie and Bill put together a jigsaw puzzle on the floor. Maybe a lot of you have been doing jigsaw puzzles on the floor or the table or somewhere over these past few weeks. I have yet to do a jigsaw puzzle, but I do love them. Captain Cook was very good about not disturbing the pieces after Bill had spanked him for eating one. He did not hear the refrigerator serviceman come through the back door. Mrs. Popper had gone marketing I think that's going to the market. For canned shrimps for the penguin, so that Mr. Popper was alone in the kitchen to explain to the serviceman what he wanted done to the refrigerator. The serviceman put down his tool bag on the kitchen floor, looked at the refrigerator, and then at Mr. Popper, who, to tell you the truth, had not shaved yet and was not very tidy. We can't all be so tidy, can we? Mister, he said, you don't need no ventilating holes in that there door. It's my icebox, and I want some holes bored in the door, said Mr. Popper. They argued about it for quite a while. Mr. Popper knew that to get the service man to do what he wanted, all he had to do was to explain that he was going to keep a live penguin in the icebox, and that he wanted to have his pet get plenty he wanted to have his pet get plenty of fresh air, even though the door was closed at night. He felt a little stubborn about explaining, however. He didn't want to discuss Captain Cook with this unsympathetic serviceman who was already staring at Mr. Popper as if he thought Mr. Popper was not quite right in his head. Come on, do what I said, said Mr. Popper. I'm paying you for it. With what, said the serviceman. Mr. Popper gave him a $5 bill. It made him a little sad to think about how many beans it would have bought for Mrs. Popper and the children. The service man examined the bill carefully, as if he didn't trust Mr. Popper one bit. But at last, he put it in his pocket, 
took a drill from his tool bag, and made five small holes in, the neat, in a neat pattern on the refrigerator door. Must have been one per dollar. Now, now, said Mr. Popper, don't get up. Wait a minute, there's one more thing. Now what, said the serviceman. I suppose now you want me to take the door off its hinges to let in a little more air. Or do you want me to make a radio set out of your ice box? Don't get funny, said Mr. Popper indignantly. That is no way to talk. Believe it or not, I know what I'm doing. I mean, having you do. I want you to fix an extra handle on the inside of the box so it can be opened from the inside of the box. That, said the serviceman, is a fine idea. You want an extra handle on the inside. Sure, sure. He picked up his tool bag. Aren't you going to do it for me? Asked Mr. Popper. Oh, sure, 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 said the serviceman, edging towards the back door. Mr. Popper saw that for all of his words of agreement, the serviceman had no intention of putting on an inside handle. I thought you were a serviceman, he said. I am. That's the first sensible thing you've said yet. You're a fine kind of a serviceman if you don't even know how to put an extra handle on the inside of an icebox door. Oh, I don't, don't I? I don't think I don't know how. As far as that goes, I've even got a spare handle in my tool bag and plenty of screws. You didn't, you needn't think I don't know how to do it if I wanted to. I'm talking in circles. Mr. Popper silently reached into his pocket and gave the serviceman his last five dollar bill. He was pretty sure that Mrs. Popper would be annoyed at him for spending all the money, but it could not be helped. Mister, said the serviceman, you win. I'll fix your extra handle. And while I'm doing it, you sit down on that chair over there facing me so I can keep an eye on you. Fair enough, said Mr. Popper, sitting down. The serviceman was still on the floor, putting in the final screws that held the new handle in place when the penguin came out to the kitchen on its silent pink feet. Surprised at seeing a strange man sitting on the floor, Captain Cook quietly walked over and began to peck him curiously. But the surface man was even more surprised than Captain Cook. Ork, said the penguin. Or perhaps it was the surface man. Mr. Popper was not sure what had happened when he picked himself and his chair a moment later, up off his chair a moment later. There had been a shower of flying tools, a violent slamming of the door, and the surface man was gone. These sudden noises, of course, brought the children running. Mr. Popper showed them how the refrigerator was now all remodeled for the penguin. He showed Captain Cook, too, by shutting him inside it. The penguin at once noticed the shiny new handle and bit it with his usual curiosity. The door opened and Captain Cook jumped out. Mr. Popper promptly put Captain Cook back inside and shut the door again to be sure that the penguin learned his lesson. Before long, Captain Cook became quite skillful at getting out and was ready to be taught how to get inside when the door was shut. By the time the policeman came to the back door, Captain Cook was going in and out of the refrigerator as easily as if he had lived in one his whole life. And here you can see the serviceman running out of the back door. Captain Cook on the back stoop. You can tell the serviceman because his shirt says, Serviceman. Check out those leopard print pants. Cool serviceman. And that's the end of that chapter. We're gonna find out about the police. The last line, just so we remember it. By the time the policeman came to the back door, Captain Cook was going in and out of the refrigerator as easily as if he had lived in one all his life. And we will find out what happens next. Because we have two more things, right? The policeman and the trouble with the license. Next time on Storytime with Uncle Scotty, I have been your host, Uncle Scotty. Thank you so much for joining us. We have our own mugs. Thank you to Beatrix for having your own mug. Hope all is going well in Atlanta. Can't wait to visit there soon, hopefully, when all this is over. And in the meantime, please check us out on Patreon. Please uh, subscribe or maybe like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, do as you please. Um, and I cannot wait to see you next time. Bye.